Welcome to Pro Save Mike documentary. Few things I would like to touch on. One, where the docket was created. This docket, for appeal purposes, was not created by the Middle District of Fort Myers. You see, Court Lister by Free Dot Law. So that's an outside source. Um. I would like to just scroll down. The second thing I'd like to draw your attention to is what a document is. You see the number one, and then you see the date. And the information, that's called a document number. And each entry that took place during the trial would have a document number. So we go down and I won't bore you, I'm sure you got it. Document number, date. Take a look at October 21, 2011. Order continuing. Who is it signed by? Signed by Judge Charlene Edward Honeywell, 10-21-2011. Okay, let's go here. October 14th. There's another judge. This is the judge they flew in to throw the case. So this is three days later. You have a different judge. I can't have two judges at the same time. This is a chief judge from Massachusetts. Okay, so we have, just before that, we have Judge Charlene Edward Honeywell. Then on the 11th, uh, uh, excuse me, November 14th, they said this order was entered at the bottom of that on 11-14-2011 by Judge Paul Magnuson. I can't have two judges at the same time. Then we go trial calendar by Judge Magnuson. Then on the 1st, of December, we have another order signed by Judge Charlene Edward Honeywells. So let's go back down. So on the, on document number 125, we have a judge uh, a, a, a trial calendar set by Judge Paul Magnuson. We go back up. We have an order on October by. Judge Charlene Edward Honeywells. Okay. Now on December 21st, case reassigned, unassigned judge. Judge Charlene Edward Honeywells no longer assigned to the case. But that's too late because there's already two judges ruling on a case, which is impossible. But the unassigned judge was meant to cover for the unassigned judge that she the magistrate had been using for the past few years now what I would like to draw your attention to after they threw the case I immediately appealed but take a look at document number 141, okay? At the end, next to my name, you have fees, filing fees not paid. So that's incorrect, filing fees were paid, and we'll get to that. Um, underneath that, motion for leave to appeal, and that was approved. But we're going to go a little deeper now. You see, transmittal of record. He never sent the record. As you can see, he have a date there, but no document number. It was inserted to give the appearance of an appeal. You see, transmittal information, I, excuse me, transcript information has document number, date. Here, is an entry but no document number it was 
to give the appearance of an appeal, notice of appeal. So we're going to go under that. Again, we have a, a document number 144. Now, what he wrote here by Jeffrey G. Thomas, satisfactory arrangement for paying the cost of the transcript have not been made. And he refers back to 141, notice of appeal. So this is where, again, he stated that filing fees are not paid. If filing fees are not paid, he cannot forward the record to the court. And if filing fees are not paid, the panel of judges at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, it will be illegal for them to hear a case where filing fees are not paid. But being a pro se litigant, they wanted to paint the picture as if they went by the rules and procedures of the court, which they did not. And so, again, February 29, uh, 29 document number 144, uh, notice of appeal, you have the transcript have not been made, uh, excuse me, satisfactory arrangement for paying the cost of transcript have not been made. And he refers back to uh, 141. So he didn't, he didn't send the, the, the appeal to the 11th Circuit, but he sent it to the uh, defendants that were being sued at the city of Naples to destroy the original docket number. And the docket number, as you can see, and thank you for your time. The docket number, as you can see, I'm so grateful for your time. Is that they put a partial number there. So, they went back and forward. But I would like to show you the difference. So here's a different docket. Again, highlighted in yellow is the partial case number. However, this is highlighted. Document number zero. So that that's where they didn't serve the city. Here, these numbers won't be in sequential order as the one before. You can always rewind and look at it again. Now, these document numbers are what the defendants use to justify their the appeal. I had the right to appeal because the judge threw the appeal. But what they did is they selected the rulings that the, again, you don't see judges' names on most of these. That's just the, uh, allowing the attorneys to do, uh, uh, write their own decisions and forge a panel of judges' names to it with the cooperation of the clerk of court, court reporter, and magistrate judge. So here we go here. But what I would like to show you is, bear with me. Take a look at this document. As you see underneath, this document number 100. Above that, document eight. This particular document where they said the case was reassigned to unassigned judge pursuant to and new case number is what it is. Judge Charlene Edward Honeywell, no longer your uh, assigned to this case. It has no document number. It's right there. Every other document has a number. But let me show you something else except that one. Now, now hopefully this will make it make sense to you. You can see both case numbers. The 113A-2, that's the court reporter's identification number. 
and then you see the case number with the UA-SPC and then you see the number uh, 2 colon 10 and then the last letters uh, uh, the CEH-36SPC that would be the original judge um, they played with the docket quite a bit so um, here on this one you can see the engineer software that they use Michael Anderson versus plaintiff city of Naples Granicus so this is another software engineer company that they 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 use to throw the case and you see the document number 127 is what they removed from the docket by using this system here and so you say well Michael how did you get this well I was years ahead of them and everything that went online I just saved and printed so upon them realizing a couple uh, more than six years later they decided to longer than that they decided to delete it but the fact is I never had my case heard by the court and the court reporter magistrate judge and attorneys forged a panel of judges signatures and created their own docket as I just showed you how they manufacture a docket pro se Mike documentary thank you for watching again the facts are there underneath the names is PDF Granicus Naples Viewfinder. That has nothing to do with the Middle District Court uh, uh, and it has nothing to do with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And here are the two case numbers. Once again, Untitled Granicus. And you see two case numbers. The one at the top and then it's a planning versus case number and then the one at the bottom. Pro Se Mike, thanks for watching.